Hey, what's up? It's Matt. Some of the videos I've been working on have been a little interfered with and delayed because of the coronavirus and everything going on. So in the meantime, while I'm preparing to put out some longer videos in the future, I wanted to still put out something quick and casual that hopefully you all could enjoy. So what I'm gonna talk about today is how to read and write Roman numerals. I think they're super fun. If you don't, you can close the video. Let's go to my computer. Roman numerals are like a tally system, a complex tally system, but a tally system nonetheless. And one of the tally systems that I feel like most of us are most familiar with are the ones that go, oh, you know, one, two, three, four, and then five is a line through it, right? Like this is a tally system, and we can easily see that we have 15 right here, we have three groups of five, and so if we had this number right here, we'd see three groups of five, and then three, so this is 18. This is a very basic tally system, um, but Roman numerals are essentially, again, just a slightly more complex tally system. And in explaining Roman numerals, I'll be talking basically about the symbols that are used in Roman numerals, as well as two specific rules you have to keep in mind to write this correctly. All right, so we'll start off with basically just the first numbers. Roman numerals actually don't have a numeral or a symbol for zero, so we're gonna skip over that altogether. Um, we're gonna start with the symbol for one, which is an I and it looks like a one equals one right there, but really one is written as an I. Um, two is written as two eyes. Three is written as three eyes, and that's kind of where that pattern stops. Um, four, we're actually gonna skip over that and come back to it in a second. Five uses a new symbol. The symbol for five is V. And so we can see five is V right there, six, is V, I, five, and then one, seven, V, I, I, eight, V, I, 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 right? So all that is making a lot of sense so far, but why did I skip four? If we were writing this as maybe we would expect, the number would be I, 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 right? Just four ones, it makes four, however, one of the rules I was talking about before, one of the two rules that you need to know for Roman numerals is that you'll never have more than three of the same room numeral in a row. To get around this, you need to use what's called subtractive notation. So here we can see that there is four I's and that's more than three, it's four. So we have to use subtractive notation and instead of writing it as I, 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 we have to write it as one before five. Right, so one, 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 one before five. In fact, literally in where it appears in the number, it's literally right before five. And so that kind of tells us that it's one subtracted from five, IV. And we don't have to worry about this because that's not how we'd write it. Um, and then we go see five V, V I, V I I, V I I I, right? So that's kind of how the subtractive notation works. I will point out that not every instance of Roman numerals existing in the wild uses subtractive notation. Some of them do just use that I, 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 I system, but the way that Roman numerals are used in modern times, they do use that subtractive notation. So let's keep going with the numbers here. We got to eight. Um, if we look at nine, we're actually gonna skip that uh, until we learn the symbol for 10. And the symbol for 10 is an X. So X equals 10. And so for nine, instead of, you know, say V, I, 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 which would be five and then four ones, that uses the same numeral more than four times in a row, right? Um, that uses the I four times. We're gonna write instead I, X, one before 10. Literally a one before a 10. And then if we, you know, write this out, we'll do a couple more is 11 is uh, X, I, 12, X, I, I, 13, X, I, 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 14, we'll skip that, and we'll do 15. 15 is X, V, 10 and five. Um, and so then 14 is gonna be 10 and four, and so 10 is X, and four is I, V. So this is the general pattern that we're gonna be following right now. Let's actually add the other symbols so we can get into more complex numbers a little more quickly, right? So we can see I is one, V is five, X is 10, L is 50. That shouldn't be terribly surprising if you watch the Super Bowl and see that L thrown in there a lot for the different Super Bowls that have been going on. C is 100, D is 500, and then M is 
1,000. And even though numbers obviously continue above 1,000, um, there actually aren't any Roman numerals higher than 1,000. And we'll talk about that in more depth later, but let me just erase this first, and then we will start writing some of those other numbers and talking about those more complex situations and scenarios. So let's say we were trying to write the number uh, 37, right? We would say x, x, x for 10, 10, 10, and then v for 5, i, i, right? And this doesn't use any more than three of the same numeral in a row, right? Like it's x, 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 that's three, but no more, v, i, i. Um, so that's, that's 37 right there. Another example, the number 79, um, we're going to start with L for 50, because if we did seven X's, that'd be more than three, right? So L for 50, then X, that's 60, that's 70, 50, 10, 10, and then nine, as we talked about before, is the numeral IX, because it's one before 10. Um, and let's actually go to one more example before talking about the last important rule of the nuances of writing in Roman numerals. So let's say we've got the number 99, right? You know, you might be thinking, oh, the numeral C is 100, and clearly we're going to have to use more than 3 to write this in somehow, so we're going to use subtractive notation for this. Could we just write this as 1 before 100, IC, and then call it a day? Uh, the answer for that one is no, we actually can't write numbers like that because of the second important rule to know for Roman numerals, we have to write each number by going through the powers of 10, starting from the biggest and ending with the smallest. And so what that means is when we're writing a number like 99, first we have to write 90 and then it has to be followed, bad arrow, and then it has to be followed by the number 9, right? So to write 90, that would be x c, 10 before 100, right? We can't do L, X, 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 because that would use X four times and we have a max of three. So we have X, C, 10 before 100, and then nine is I, X. And so then when we combine those two back together again, we have 99 is, whoops, we have X, C, I, X. And maybe that looks a little ugly, but the reason is just to keep it clear with going through, again, the powers of 10 and separating it very neatly that way. And I'll actually show you one more example of that with a much, much bigger number. So, for example, let's say something like, uh, you know, 3,000, uh, 449 or something like that. Right, 3,449. Uh, use an example with a lot of subtractive notation intentionally. Um, so the three for the 3,000, that's pretty basic. That's gonna be MMM. But let's actually break it down into those numbers, right? So we have 3,000 plus 400 plus 40 plus nine. So 3,000 is MMM. 400 is going to be uh, CD because it's 100 before 500, we can't just write C four times because then that would be a letter, a numeral used more than three times in a row. So we'd have C, D for 400, and then 40 would be X, L. Remember X, L, 10 before 50 because we can't write, um, we can't write X, 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 X because that would be using it more than uh, three times in a row. And then nine, as we know, is I, X. And so when we and we just combine these all together by writing them without any spaces. So M, 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 C, D, X, L, I, X. And that is 3,449. Something else I didn't really think about to mention until right this second is that when you're writing in subtractive notation, you never use more than two numbers for the individual power of 10 that you're representing. So, you know, L is 50 and X is 10 before 50. We can represent 10 in other ways than X, like we could do VV, and that doesn't violate the no more than three in a row. But when you do subtractive notation, you're not supposed, you're supposed to be as efficient and sort of condense or con and concise as possible. So we wouldn't write VVL, we would just write XL, because it's 10 before 50. Same for CD. Uh, you know, in theory, C could be written as LL, but that's not really utilized because that's not an efficient way of 
actually representing that value. When we have one number that can represent a value, we would choose to represent it with that one number instead of two numbers. It's just easier for everyone. Now, you might also be wondering, okay, we've got this number 3,000 here. How would we write something like 4,000, right? Is there a number for um, M? And there really isn't, at least not in modern Roman numerals. There are some ways around this, like for example, um, some systems use a line over the number to be equal to the number times a thousand. Um, and you know, so I guess 4,000, you could write something like that. Um, but in general, this is modern Roman numerals. I kind of sped through this, hope it was relatively digestible. But again, I just wanted to create something and put it out there in this interesting and I guess uncertain times, um, just so everyone has something to look at and hopefully enjoy and pass the time. But otherwise, that's kind of all I got for now. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Skeptical Seventh and all my other patrons for supporting me. And I will hopefully see you in the future with a nice and bigger video for you. I'll see you later.